Sight is an awesome AI tool for academia and research, but here's the thing. I actually prefer their free tools over their paid offering. And in this video, I'll show you all the things they offer and you can decide for yourself how you want to use it. All right then, let's get into it. So this is what it looks like when you first go on site. Here it is, AI for research. Now, I think Site has really struggled to kind of find their niche within the AI tool realm, and you'll see what I mean throughout this video. But before you do anything, the one thing I suggest you do is skip Assistant and go to Product and look at their free tools, their free resources. Browser extension, badge, and Zotero plugin. We don't care about the badge so much, but this browser extension and the Zotero plugin, I think you should get because they're just good. So if you click browser extension, you get taken over to the browser extension, and then you can actually just upload it. And this is how it works. You know, it gives you a little sort of like bar underneath all of the Google Scholar searches. So if you head over to somewhere, you'll end up with these sort of like little badges underneath, 70, 1, 69, and 0. What does it mean? Well, if you hover over it, it doesn't really tell you too much. But if you click on it, it will take you to the site page of that paper and then you can get a proper understanding of what those numbers are and what they're telling you. I wish they would include a little like toolbar, a little thing that pops up and just says this means this because I keep on forgetting which ones they mean. But anyway, you can head over here and then if you hover in this, you can see the first one is the number of publications citing this work. Then you get the number of supporting citation statements. That's people saying, yeah, this is true. Check out this citation. And then you get this one, 99 number of mentioning citation statements about this work. And then you've got this one, the number of contrasting citation statements about this work. So positive, just citing and negative. So if you head back here, you can see that's what this means over here. So 70, 1, 69, 0. And then here we've got more and more, 12, 1. And you can see we've got them for a large majority of the papers that we're searching. So good. If we click through to the publisher, we get this little site bar on the side. You can hide it. Oh, look at that cheeky little post poking by the side there. Ooh, hello, what are you doing? You can expand it if you want. And then you get all of the same numbers here just in a nice little toolbar. So having this on your browser, I think just makes complete sense if you're in that stage of your research where you're doing lots and lots of uh, literature searching. And what do these numbers mean? Well, they give you the ability to kind of look at a particular article and be like, is it well cited? That's a plus. We want a well cited article and we want the, you know, it to be recognized by the community so we can sort of like put a little bit more emphasis on what it's saying. Um, and then you get this, is it highly um, sort of like cited for supporting reasons? Well, those two first two numbers are really what we want because we want it to be cited a lot and we want a lot of people to say, yes, this is a good research. We don't really care, you know, this is agnostic in the middle one, more citations, yeah, that's good. But what we want to be careful careful of is that this number isn't really large. This is the contrasting citations where they're saying, oh, this work is wrong in all these reasons, or I don't agree with this re this work over here. That's what we're worried about. So it gives you that kind of sixth sense of a researcher so that as you're browsing the research, you can be like, oh yeah, I trust this paper more than this one because people really don't like this one. But if there is a paper that's sort of like cited because people disagree with it, maybe a nice little research gap for you. Anyway, I digress. So that's the first thing I would do, head over to the site browser extension and download it. Then we go back to here, the main page up to product, and then we get this Zotero plugin. Absolutely love the Zotero plugin because it gives you those same numbers in Zotero. So getting a plugin into Zotero is super, super easy. This is my library at the moment. You go to tools, you go to plugins, and you get this that pops up. And then the file that you download from the Zotero page here, I'll show you where that is, Zotero plugin. Then you go all the way, uh, no, where is it going? Come on, site plugin for Zotero. Okay, yeah, we've got to go through everything. Anyway, you download this XPI, whatever that means, .xpi file to your computer, and it's easy as dragging and dropping it onto this window, and then it's all ready to go. Love it, love it, love it, super easy, thanks Zotero. But the good thing about having site in Zotero is that as you're adding references, you do get this little sort of button along the side here, Bonk, there it is. And then you can see all of those really important numbers in this sidebar. And then if you want to click the site report, you can click there and it takes you out to the paper on the site page. And here we are. There's all the information. Love it, love it, love it. So getting those two things into your workflow probably makes sense for a lot of researchers. They're free. They're powerful. Love it. Now let's look at their paid offerings. And uh, yeah, 
I think it's good, but they haven't quite hit the nail on the head just yet, and you'll see what I mean. By the way, do you like my new jumper? I made it myself. In Australia, they've got this horrible dessert called fairy bread, where it's white bread, butter, and hundreds and thousands or sprinkles on top, and they serve it at children's parties. Anyway, I saw this fabric and I was like, yes, I've got to have that. Love it. So yeah, do you like it? I like it. All right then, site for research. Here we go. First of all, if you head to product, you've got this assistant up here. Assistant, you go here, and then you get this sort of like chat interface. We're very used to seeing this with tools like SciSpace, with tools like uh, Consensus. You can ask a question here or you can type that for menu and it will ask you, you know, different things. But ultimately you can go in, put in a question and then there's a few settings here. You can let a system decide whether or not you want spe um, specific references, but we always want to use references because we're researchers and scientists, aren't we? And then it says specify evidence source. So I'm going to say both citation statements and abstracts, then use table mode. Now I'm going to leave that off and then you've got all of these sort of like finer controls down here. The one thing I like with Site is you can change the GPT model. So here um, I already, will, yeah, just stick with Claude, that's fine. And then we've got ranking, uh, I want it ranked by relevance and uh, yeah, that's easy. And so let's have a look at my chat history and this is what I did today. So um, I asked this question, what is the best intervention for social media addiction? And then we get all of these results down here. So we've got the reference and we got the response. So not only do we get the reference with all the nice little numbers we can go to the publisher add to our dashboard which we'll talk about in a minute and then we've got response so it gives me a little AI summary of that response and down here we can put our little pointer over that and then we get a little bit more information as well so overall you know this is a pretty good place to start if you want to find some references and you want to get that kind of little snapshot of whether or not the world agrees with what they're saying um you can add columns, you can create a column, instructions on what you want it to do. This is very similar to other tools that you've seen, but it doesn't do as well as other tools. So if you want to do something like this, I recommend heading over to Society Space or even somewhere um, like Consensus. I think those places do it a little bit better than this at the moment. So overall, they've kind of done a good enough job, but it's not really a standout product at the moment. You know, this assistant is fine. And also the most annoying thing about this is that their free version is very limited. You can't save any history search. Um, you know, it just gives you like seven or something searches. Uh, but yeah, it's just not very uh, sort of like generous in terms of the sorts of functionalities they let you use for free. So I ended up paying, this cost me $20 US dollars a month, which is quite expensive for a tool that has relative limited scope at the moment. That's why, like I said, the free tools are even better because they're free and they're actually kind of quite useful. I think they've gonna done a really good job with the free stuff, which is, anyway, you, you explain to me why it's that way around. Um, and then we've got all these other things. So at the moment, look, we're in this dashboard dashboard. What does that mean? Okay, yeah, fine. And then we go to product, we can go to um, search. And then this is another place where you can search articles. And then you've also got assistant here as well. So you can see the user interface is a bit like mashed up. It's like not completely intuitive. And then if you click on the next thing down here, product dashboards, then you get taken to this other screen, which uh, yeah, you've got all of these things down here now, which I wish they would just put me on this page to start with, because I can see all of your tools down the side. Anyway, so we got the welcome. I've not finished the welcome thing. We've got the feed. The feed, you don't have any notifications. That's just if some papers or something come up and it's like, hey, read out these. You've got your bio. So this is me, although it hasn't got all of my papers. I think I've got 14 publications. They're not all there, but here's some of them. Um, and then here's the tools here. So dashboard. We can actually add dashboards. So you can create new dashboards by importing Zotero sort of like files and then creating a dashboard based on all of that information in your Zotero feed. So this is a place where you can kind of aggregate references and then it kind of gives you a summary of what's going on with those references. Not super useful. You know, it's good to kind of have this as a little kind of like snapshot. But if this is already in your Zotero, you know, largely in terms of these numbers here, which are the most interesting, at least for me, then uh, yeah, I don't know why a dashboard would be particularly useful um, anyway. So yeah, so th that's the dashboard function. And then uh, we can go to reference checks. Now reference checks is something that you pay for that I think is actually quite useful. So if you are towards the end of a publishing um, sort of process where you do want to check over, say, a peer reviewed paper, 
go and do yourself a reference check. And so I've done this here, I put in one of my old papers and you can see what happens is it will give you an idea of if there's any references with editorial concern, like they've had corrections or that sort of stuff. So this is all of my papers that I cited in that publication based on most contrasted. So do I want to put this in? Yeah, because it's only seven out of the um, 4,000, over 4,000 citations that say it's not true. Good, I like that. Here's three. So overall, you can just go through and be like, you know, do I like referencing these things now that I know these numbers. It's a really great way of getting a snapshot and just doing a little bit of a sense check before you send off um, that uh, paper to somewhere where it's going to get judged by a sad, angry <laughs> reviewer. Um, so yeah, reference checks, I kind of like it, but is it worth the $20? I don't know. I feel like if you're going to do something like this, Thesify um, does it a little bit better. Paper Wizard is another one. So yeah, you can use the reference checks and then there. Um, you've also got alerts um, and then down here you've got all of these other things. My publications, you've got metrics on you um, and you've got, you know, you can claim papers by saying, oh, I wrote this paper, include it in my profile. You've also got a public profile, which is kind of like um, a Google Scholar profile, which is free. So I don't know why, you know, necessarily you would want one of these site ones. Um, so yeah, you can see what I mean now. Like a lot of other tools do this a little bit better, but their free tools are great. So just use the free tools. And in the future, if they include, um, you know, other things that make it worth paying for, I'll let you know. But that's how you use Site. That's all of the tools they've got. Let me know in the comments if you found it particularly useful in the paid version, because maybe I'm missing something. Let me know. I know you love free tools, so if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the seven free AI tools that every researcher needs to know about. Go check it out.